2022. Um, start with a roll call of our members and our alternates, and then the rest of the public. Um, Amelia, why don't you start? Uh, Vice Chair Amelia, yeah. present. Um, Just say your whole name. Oh, sorry. Yep. Vice Chair Amelia Cushing. Lee Fogg, Blackman, Officio. Angus Gorman, Chair. Gary Whitney, Secretary. And the two alternates here tonight. Alice Royal, Chair. And Olivia. Do you mind going around the room to say who you are? Everybody else? Maybe Catherine, you start. Catherine Mulholland. Marie O'Reilly. And behind you? Neway Pasek. Brian Huff. Blake Wilder just moved in. Right on. <laughs> and we've got Paul Love. Um, great. Um, let's take a few minutes to review the March minutes. Um, I want to make a note of a few things. Uh, right before we opened the meeting, Leaf made an excellent point of uh, limiting discussion until public comment. Um, I brought a copy of the September 2021 minutes. Um, just as a reminder of how we still have to keep going with this. <laughs> the very start of the minutes from September last year are, the chair opened with a discussion on how to better conduct the meeting to assure a greater degree of order as many times as to help avoid recent incidents experienced in some previous meetings. Board members and members of the public provided input. The chair stated that while input from everyone was generally viewed as being advantageous and encouraged, he had reserved the right to suspend such privilege when appropriate as judge necessary to maintain order and an atmosphere of civility and ensure the objectives of the meeting were met. So we're kind of still there. It's kind of my fault, uh, too, and uh, we're just going to try to do the best we can to have a good meeting. So uh, with that in mind, let's look over the March minutes. Um, and I have um, They're super concise. There's, uh, there's no problem that I have with the way they're put together. Um, the one detail which I wanted to just make sure was noted is that um, I did not propose to increase the board to maximum. I wanted to increase it to four, which was rich plus three. I was looking to add three more and, and have it be four total, not five. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. Pretty, pretty certain about that. I'll entertain a motion if anyone wants to make one, uh, please. Uh, as amended. Motion to accept the March 24th minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, so there's no correspondence except for the silly stuff saying you dropped off for me. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, we have received a um, an application for a voluntary merger, and we are going to wait on that because we have a few things to do. Um, we're missing one of our relatively recently new members, Sabrina Kerwin. Uh, I think she had a family event of some sort. Um, but 
largely this board is inexperienced and there's nothing wrong with that, but I was hoping to take a light agenda tonight and just try to talk about how we can uh, learn more about what we do and how to find out how to do those things correctly. And um, I mean, you're a new select board member. This is your start of the second year after a tumultuous first year. We have two new alternates. Um, I pretend to know what I'm doing sometimes. Gary does the same. And we're just going to try the best we can to all get better at this. Um, so um, one thing that I want to note, Allison, Paul, do you want to just come sit with us? We're not voting on anything yet, but I think it would be helpful for the alternates to come up and join in. Sabrina's gone, Rich isn't here. That's true. And we're going to have to vote on something. So, okay. all right. Um, uh, so, our primary resource right now is the town subdivision regulations. These are on the town website. They're viewable, they're printable. Um, if you are not a, in a position to print them, um, please let me know. I can make sure that we get a copy of them for you. Um, we have been talking about revising them. And that's taken some time, and we're, you know, it's challenging, and that's great. Uh, but the more you familiarize yourself with them, um, I don't think you need to go home and read them every night, but, uh, you know, we'll, they're a big part of what we do. Um, uh, the other resource which I find extremely valuable is the planning board in New Hampshire. I have a 2015 version. The 2021 version is available on a state website. Um, don't remember exactly which of many computing state websites it is, but if you simply type the planning board in New Hampshire, it's a handbook for local officials, and it breaks it down into non-legalese so you have a standard chance of understanding what is being expected. Um, uh, there is a very thick book with all of the state laws, which is very valuable and somewhat hard to negotiate. Um, I think in this age, we are mostly able to search for RSAs online. Um, the state does a good job of um, demonstrating those. Um, and I think a lot of them are cited directly in a planning board in the Hampshire book. Um, one of the biggest challenges I've had with planning board in general is trying to read through what is appropriate for Nashua and what is appropriate for Grafton. Yeah, you're from Nashua. I forgot about that when I said that. But, uh, That's my whole time. You, you sort of see where I'm coming from. Yeah, there's a lot more traffic down there. There's a little bit of that. Um, so, I mean, a lot of the laws equally apply, but um, there are many situations that you have in a small, or medium, or even large city that like, really are hard to figure out how they would fit into the scheme. And oftentimes they don't. Um, and so just try to, the more information you can learn, the better. Um, so uh, though I, I think between the subdivision regulations and this handbook, um, the other thing I have is something that Maureen has kindly provided to a number of us. Um, Maureen O'Reilly has been on the planning board for on and off for a long time and is very good at getting at the bottom of legal details and other uh, other things, and it's great. Um, you put this together, huh? From scratch. Yeah, so this Five is- Five of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so this has a lot of um, specific, uh, it, we can use this to cite references to specific things if we're confused, it often points to the correct RSA at the right time. I don't know where they all are, You've got one. So they are around if anyone needs it as a resource. Um, so uh, those are all excellent resources. I just want to talk a tiny bit more about what we do at the planning board. We have a regulatory role and we have a non-regulatory role. The non-regulatory role is creating a master plan uh, and revising it uh, occasionally, let's say. Um, Every 10 years. Yeah, I know. It's, ours is 
was 30, 35 or something years old, 36 years old. 1986. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's way overdue by most standards. I would agree that it's overdue. Um, it is a non-regulatory document. Um, and it is a critical component of the legal requirements for having a capital improvements program, uh, which is how we save money for big ticket items and things like that. Um, it is something that I would love to update in the next few years, maybe. Um, Sabrina was the champion, the idea that we should not bite off multiple projects at the same time. And so that is on the back burner because I feel as, as though it's very valuable in concept, the regulatory function of the board is perhaps more immediately valuable. Um, and so the regulatory function of the plan, well, okay, back to the master plan. It's a mission statement. It doesn't tell you you have to do anything. Uh, it simply is a compilation of surveys sent out to the uh, population and see what people like the idea of in town. Um, I can't remember. Does anyone know if the current master plan is on the town website? It is not on the town website. It is on the um, uh, thing over uh, uh, the uh, Grafton and Sunapi. Uh, the the Gra uh, uh, Upper Valley, Upper Lake, Valley Lake one the, the, the the Regional Planning Commission. Yeah, back in the olden days. Right. Um, I have a copy if anybody needs it, but it's like. It's, and something pages thick. It's very thick, it's pretty dry. Mm -hmm. yep. It's fun for somebody who's been here for a while and like seeing all these old names and everything. Um, I was hoping, I haven't even reached out to them yet, but there's a couple of people who put it together or who were on the board when it was put together who were still here, namely Jenny Joyce and Paul Jalbert. And I don't know if there's anybody else who you know of who's still around who was part of the crafting of that. And you two might have some good insight. We that. worked on it after that. Yeah. And, and it didn't have it reapproved necessarily or okay. Um, what what era was that? <laughs> Paleolithic. <laughs> <laughs> twice the same or something, yeah. How many years ago was that? Oh, at least fifteen. Okay. So like early two thousands. Before you got on. Yeah. 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 Um Okay. Um, well, anyway, that's that's great about the master plan. It is a long shot uh, hope, and um, the uh, immediate concern, which we've been gradually pecking away at, is to revise the subdivision regulations. They are functionally unchanged from 1979. They were reapproved in 2006 with some updated RSAs. Um, it is perfectly plausible that we would not end up voting to change anything at all and simply reapprove them. We also have a lot of suggestions on what to change, um, but that is going to be the more immediate uh, task at hand. Hmm. I was hoping to do it last year, and now I'm hoping to do it this year, and maybe it won't even happen then, but we can at least try. Uh, we went through a lot of it line by line. It was challenging, um, not through necessarily too many disagreements, just because it's, it's really tedious, and um, I made a suggestion to try to move faster with it, um, perhaps offer my own suggestion on some edits, and uh, I've been saying that for a few months and we've had other things come up and now we have a new team and I just want to start that again. So, um, we'll see if we can get that, we'll, we can see if we can get a rough draft for that, say, next, next meeting, that would be a goal. Um, so, what do the subdivision regulations include and what do we do that's regulatory? We oversee subdivisions, and we oversee lot line adjustments, and we oversee voluntary mergers. Um, a lot line adjustment is a simple minor subdivision that doesn't include any new lot, lots being created. We performed one of those last meeting um, for the PECs and the Smiths. Um, uh, we may end up performing a more elaborate subdivision for Anson and Jen Smith on the remaining properties soon. Uh, that's a little bit more involved. It requires a public hearing because new lots are being created. It has a lot more stipulations surrounding it. And the details of those are things that we can learn. Um, 
The final thing is a voluntary merger, which is the simplest. It basically has two lots owned by the same person, and they say, I don't want these to be separate anymore. It is not retractable. In other words, one might own two lots on, say, Kilton Pond, where it was subdivided, chopped in smaller parcels than is currently legally allowed, smaller than two acres. And somebody who had two three-quarter acre lots might decide to merge them into one one and a half acre lot. And that's wonderful. It will simplify their tax bill. It will probably find them a break on taxes to a certain extent. But they will not be able to resubdivide. And as long as they know that, I don't think there's any reason to prevent somebody from performing one of those as long as it can be demonstrated that they own both pieces of property. Um, that the RSA is saying will be approved unless there's some reason. Exactly. And it's usually like a logistical thing like um, the ownership is questioned or uh, the deed isn't right or we, we just have to get to the bottom of why. So it's, it, it's, it's an excellent example of the board being a communicative tool to make sure that this is done legally and ethically. I think it's great. Uh, we have one of those tonight. And I feel like that's an excellent place to start with a relatively um, new board. Um, so I mean, I'd love to go around the circle. And you don't have to contribute anything, but if there's any questions or thoughts or uh, stuff that you are curious about or that has crossed your mind, um, go around a few times if you want. But Leif, what do you think of the planning board so far? Well, I've only had one meeting and I don't know if it was But, uh, I didn't really have time to turn that about it. Really? Nothing. Yeah, that's not it. Right on. <clears throat> Alice, do you have any? No yeah. questions or concerns. Yeah. Okay. Same here, I'm a newbie, so. Yep. All right. Here we'll learn. Same <laughs> Gary, what do you think these days? Uh, well, we've had better days, obviously, but I think we can hopefully work things out. Yep. I'm, I'm there. Um, so, all right. Um, so, we've, there's our little discussion of training opportunities and resources. Um, and so, uh, typically, the chair appoints an alternate to um, to replace a missing member to vote. Um, Alice, I think I, I approached you about this first, so you're on tonight if you're okay. going. Um, and so that completes the board. Uh, it's noteworthy that it is, if Leaf is not here, we cannot appoint one of you to replace him. Although perhaps somebody more more. Uh, Qualified could tell me this, but could Tom or Cindy replace you? Uh, yes. one, of one of the selectmen could replace you if you were out. This doesn't mean for it. Uh, it's not a pro thing. It's a pro something else. But okay. Tom has mentioned that that would be for. Yeah. Well, he, I think he was missing, and I wasn't sure whether I should appoint Rich or not. Um, and I think the answer is no. Um, so okay. Um, anyways, Alice, you're on, and so we're a uh, board of five, um, and we have a voluntary merger. Um, Sue Smith has left us a post-it on here saying this has been paid in full. Yeah, she has to check because $12 as required. I left it with her as opposed to uh, me having to carry it all around town and just closing it. The only thing we have to act on is the application. So when I take the key back tomorrow, uh, we can take care of that with her and file it and be done with it, hopefully. Great. The only thing I have to note is, uh, uh, all right, well, from my initial review, I mean, um, people can check me and hopefully I go out. I saw everything except for uh, 2B, the description of the sketch of one of the improvements. Okay. That was not there. I, I'm not sure how much we need that. That's not an RSA thing. Sure. It's just something that's in our application. The only thing on the RSA is mentioned in uh, 30, uh, 
679439A is uh, notification to uh, mortgagees. Uh, and I checked the uh, registrar's uh, uh, registry's, uh, database and uh, their mortgage was uh, resolved or uh, is alone there in uh, 2008 ish. So that, that's not an issue. Well, that's a great point. Uh to bring up with uh, with a merger is uh, you don't want to merge a property where you have a lien on one half of it. It would seem like you want to make sure that you actually own both of them. According to the RSAs, what you have to do is notify the mortgagees that that's the case so they can update uh, their records and that uh, the registry's uh, records are updated also as far as who holds the uh, mortgage. But again, in this case here, around 2008, that seemed to have been. Uh, now, how did we see that the mortgage has been displaced or paid off? Yeah, we're just trying to think. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. It's all on that. Okay. Just a matter of finding the right there it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> decent. There's a ghost in the car. Uh -huh. <laughs> a goat? It would seem if both of the lots were on the, uh, on the, had the same mortgage, it would be a little different. But if, if, if one of them has a mortgage and the other doesn't, does not seem like it would be complicated? Or is it the same, same deal that you got as long as they're going to buy this one? Uh, that's what I gather from the RSA. As long as it's properly updated, uh, who holds the mortgage and uh, it's recorded. Right. Uh, it uh, gets changed in the recording. Uh, and it doesn't seem to be an issue. No, it's an interesting, like, kind of, like, you could devalue a property pretty heavily, like, with a snap of a finger, by merging it in so that you couldn't have it, you couldn't sell it by itself. Uh, well, I, I'm just speculating. I guess that's why you have to notify the mortgagee in case they want to at least. Right, then they have a, a window to say, hey, you can't do that or something. Like that. Whatever their legal options are, I'm not a lawyer, I don't really know. But Fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, one thing that we encounter here is uh, book and page number versus map and lot number. And that is a very valuable distinction to make. Uh, book and page is at the Haverhill. Registry of Deeds uh, method, and the map and lot number is the town tax scheme. Um, and it can be challenging because the deed in Haverhill does not necessarily include a map and lot number. Um, although I believe a map and lot number is supposed to at least find, give you some way of tracing to the deed, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. They don't always match from what I've seen. For real, and it's yeah. uh, because one's the uh, subdivision lot uh, number and one's the tax map lot number. So, yeah. uh, I, you know, you just gotta look and check to see they all go the right way and they're in the right place. And you know. uh, part of a well-functioning planning board is being able to identify things like this when they are in front of us, so that. Using the term "clean it up" has, you know, been less than appealing to some people. I understand that because it sounds like we're trying to, you know, manipulate people's property. But it's uh, it's great to be able to have this stuff a little bit less in limbo. Like when we did, there was the Frosts had a house where there was two lots, and the lot, the property line was in the middle of the house. Like, you know, that seemed like a valuable thing for the planning board to go through. So. Um, yeah, there's a house on uh, the uh, smaller lot here. Okay, actually that copy for here. Yep. On the computer, it's... Yep. That one there. The smaller yep. lot has the house. The avatar yep. says they have a house and a shed. Yep. Total value between the two of them of 113000 Again, there's no map in there, but, I mean, again... So this is an excellent example, I don't if I don't mean, mind, of it's great to have people in town because I know exactly who these people are, what lots there are, where the house is. It's like, it helps. Um, they have their house on a skinny little bit, tucked in behind the farmer's property. Maybe it's not a farm, but it's a, uh, yeah, they just want to join it up with their field and their backwoods. Right, that's a big from what Avatar says. Yes, and as far as I can tell, the only part, it's, it's just got a field up front. So, um, anyhow, uh, we 
14. And then we just want to check the deeds on both of those. Um, and the book and page number is also it'll, it'll shown up. on uh, India too. So yep. they're all highlighted. If you read the description, it kind of sort of goes the right way. You'd expect an accomplice, you know, I didn't measure it, but it just says, you know, kind of sort of what I'd expect. Yep. It's a pretty old school look indeed. is this is the Hardy schoolhouse so um, their, their house is the Hardy Hill schoolhouse so that's that's mentioned on the deed it kind of makes sense for what we know so anyways I would pass this around for just a quick peek for everyone there's no rush at all but um, I don't see any reason to have a problem with the way this is put together What's that? There's a house in the shed, according to what Avatar says. The, yeah, they, they, they have a little more than that. They do have, house they have a house, a garage, a tall barn, another mm -hmm. barn. They have they've got, yeah, they've got at least, it again, but yeah, it. <coughs> they, they've got a goat barn that's about four story high. <laughs> Maybe would fit on these tables. You know, it's, shed, equal inventory. Also states building has been removed, but I don't know what that means. Uh, electric baseboard, backup heat, rough drywall, he's minor trim. We can't do the merger until they uh, finish their drywall. <laughs> yeah, and again, I don't have a uh, temporary business and we have full access to it, but uh, we don't have access to the building. All we have is the general room for the SM. Well, I see here's the house in the ship. I did too. Well, yeah. Now, what is it? <laughs> it's a That's great. Sent us sent to all the planning board, graphic planning board stuff they had. For us to keep? It'll be at the town office. Soon? Or it it's there soon. now. Well, we ought to sort through that and see what we want to do. Yeah. Uh, it's time to see it. Oh. It's in actual books <laughs> and folders. Okay. All right. Well, it's going to stay there if you want to look at it. You can go ahead and look at it, but it's totally. That's going where? The town office. Just go in and see if you can ask her to see. It's from the county, I guess. Where's it from? Oh, from okay. the Drafton County Library is getting remodeled. Drafton County Library. So they sent us, okay. I guess they sent every town in there on planning board stuff. Who knows what, what we get to learn from that. I wasn't going to sit there and look through it. Fair enough. Um, okay, uh, well, before we make any any movements with this. Uh, I want to just go through the process, and I'm not a complete expert on this, so any input is valuable. Um, just the, the methods of making motions and following through with them. Um, my understanding is that if you'd like something to happen, you make a motion for something to happen, uh, somebody else will second the motion, 
and the chair will ask uh, how many people are in favor or against it. Um, Generally, isn't there some discussion? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, that's a, that's correct. It, um, and and I think that it is sort of silly etiquette for maybe the chair to not make motions most of the time, but I don't think there's anything saying the chair can't. Uh, there is a way of throwing a motion in somebody's face, which is saying, I will entertain a motion to do this. If I said that, then it's kind of like setting somebody else up to, it's kind of silly, but it seems to be the way that the boards have been doing it. Um, and so, yes, absolutely, we should like make a motion, look for a second, uh, talk about anything that is critical to whether we really want to go for that or not, and then have a vote. Um, you know, and often have a discussion about a known topic before even making a motion. I don't know if there's anybody who would like to contribute a, any conceptual parts to that. Just in clarifying eyes, nays, and abstention. Right. Um, yeah, you, you, you can say yay or I, and you can say nay or no, or you know, making it clear. And definitely abstaining is neither yes nor no, and that's an important consideration. Um, in terms of voting, we are required to have a quorum of three of a majority of the total board to hold a meeting. Since we have five on the board, three is a majority, we need three people to even have a meeting. There certainly have been times when someone's forgotten or somebody couldn't make it and we didn't even have a quorum. It's too bad. Uh, usually it doesn't happen to happen when there's business, and, but whatever. Uh, try to avoid that. It's nice to have a full board. Uh, you do not need to have a full board to vote on things like this. You do have to have a full board, or at least you have to get a majority of the full board to vote on um, any sort of change to the planning board structure itself and subdivision regulations, like we couldn't hold a public hearing and have um, three of us here, two vote aye, one vote nay, that wouldn't fly. It would fly for this, but in order to change our regs, we would have to have a public hearing and we would have to have at least three people here and all three of them would have to vote for it. Or we could have four or five people here and at least three would have to vote for it. Uh, so that's a distinction that's worth remembering. I don't think I even knew that until the last year, but it's definitely a thing. Um, and yeah, typically the chair appoints an alternate to replace a vacant seat. I have heard of boards having a discussion on who should. I don't know if anyone has an opinion one way or the other. Everything I've read suggests the chair simply appoints, but um, I'm not going to be a hard ass about it if there's any reason somebody thinks. Um, Somebody else should be serving on a given night. That's well, it'd be nice to spread it around. It's absolutely, people get that experience. Yeah. No question about that. Um, that's totally, totally legit. Um, so, um, I guess at that point, um, I would entertain a motion to accept this merger. So moved. Okay. When Gary says that, he basically says exactly what I said, but he's the one that's doing that. That's like so little etiquette. Um, and so we need a second. A second. Okay. And so all in, in any any further discussion about the merger as it's presented? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we have the yeah. What's that? Are they all eyes? Yeah, all eyes. Okay. Yep. All right. Just come on. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No all eyes, no nays, no stenches. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Um, something I don't know the answer to. We might need to pick on the crowd here too. If you have a few people abstaining, but all the others are eyes, is it unanimous? No. Okay. I think he's right. Yeah. Unanimous. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
process is unanimous. Everyone has to vote. And that's a, that's a good point, right? Just one person could vote yes. Everybody else could abstain. Mm -hmm. And exactly. that person wouldn't be a majority. So that, right on. Yeah. yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yep. Just, uh, sometimes the best way to learn something is to attempt to teach it. <laughs> right on. Okay, so the lots and parcels identified above are eligible for voluntary merger. We actually had a pretty mellow meeting. The two would do the long fields, which was at Gremlin. Okay. He's actually the only one to put a bid in. So he can get that. Let's see. Maureen. Oh my god, not Maureen. Sorry, I just looked right at you. Gretchen was supposed to have a. Uh, he's on VIN this. two very experienced people who happen to show up here and I just was going to ask you as part of public comment if you had anything that you would like to contribute to what the planning board ought to consider doing in the near future. Uh, Maureen, maybe you go first. Um, just want to let you know a couple of things that you were going over here. Yep. Voluntary merger is basically a courtesy. You're just checking to be sure that the deeds match and the properties about each other. Um, you said master plan and capital improvements plan? Yeah. Actually, the town many years ago gave you permission to do a capital improvements plan. And it hasn't been taken away, so. Right. No, no, I understand that. But it's, it's, it's spelled out pretty clearly in the planning board handbook that you need a master plan to even have one of those. Well, we do have a master plan. Right, I know I understand that. And it would seem like even regardless of how ancient it is, it's probably worth revising it once in a while. Uh, and when you do start on it, you're not going to have to 
do a lot. There are some things that probably need to be updated. And if we belong to the Upper Valley Lake Sunapee Regional Planning Commission, you could go to them and they could help you out. However, the select board several years ago decided not to, not to join them. Um, it would be really helpful related to the master plan. And they may help you anyway, mm -hmm. even if we don't belong. Um, do you have any connections, uh, li liaisons, w w like, uh, it, it, do, do you have information that you could present to us or people you could direct us to to learn what it would cost and who to talk to and what the timelines are oh, like? Oh, just give them a call. Okay. Yeah, they're easy to talk with. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I mean. They do it, they do it for a lot of towns in the area. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you guys sitting down and going over all of that, yeah. it's kind of boring. It was however many years ago. It's basically a plan for what you want to see the town look like 10 years down the road. So that was written, what, 30 years, some odd years ago. So yeah. not much has changed in town, you know? We might like to have bus service come through to take the elderly to their appointments or food shop or something like that. Um, it, it, it's, ba it's basically asking the town what they would like to see in the future. Right, I think a reminder that it is absolutely non-regulatory is important. Um, right. I don't like the sound of it, to be perfectly frank. I've made that clear in the past. You don't like the sound of a master sound plan? It sounds like a, <laughs> it's a it wish sounds like a George Orwell book or something. No, you know, it's, like, it's a wish list. No, I know, I know, I get it, I get it. It's just like the way that it's laid out there is like, this is what oh, you do it serious. now. It's you know. too serious for you. <laughs> But it, it, it's not a bad idea to have a plan. Have you been in like towns like where all the roads are going the right way and it's easy to find where you're going and then you've been in the other towns where you have to go here and then you have to go there and then you have to go here and go there? Lots laying fun. out, laying out a, a, a plan like that in the city works. Sure. You know? And yeah, that yeah. that's, would be part of the master plan. You don't want an ambulance to, you know, in the city to go here and here and here and here and here and here to get there. I wonder who wrote Boston's master plan. <laughs> who wrote that? Ah, Boston. <laughs> it was before such a concept. Like, oh, like, right. Probably Cracks. a whole bunch of different people in different areas. <laughs> a lot of Boston streets are just paved over cow paths. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, if you look at some place like Salt Lake City or something, it's like, <laughs> like everything's perfect. <laughs> um, Catherine, you've expressed some some sentiments in the past. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to share with the board. I don't want to. I'm not hearing well enough to be able to participate, so I'm just here with the body. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, great. Uh, remind me of your name? Blake. Blake. Uh, you have any, I mean, you provided us with some good stuff tonight. Yeah. Anything else to share or any thoughts? I was trying to Google it. I'm from Boston, by the way. It wasn't a knock on Boston. <laughs> oh, there's a reason why I'm out here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, running away from the Orwellian stuff. Uh, there is a handbook that I was trying to look up, and I will bring it the next meeting, but there is a constitutional handbook on motions. It's a tiny little handheld motion that is a really good resource on how to um, navigate meeting motions and what a quorum is and all that. But that's a, a like a federally a federal it's used by the U.S. Con uh, U.S. Congress. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's that's that sounds like a valuable resource for something like like us as rinky dink as this is. It's kind of like well, might as well learn at least know what's right. Maybe <laughs> if we don't do it that way, it's a different story. But. Um, do you guys have anything you're interested in contributing? We do. Yeah. No. Um, master plan. I mean, like we have a bunch of houses here and like town ups in a town hall. Like what? I, I guess I don't understand. What yeah, it's going to be planned. It's um, <laughs> yes. service. Okay, fine. <laughs> sure. A lot of it has to do with um, if uh, what people in town like. Um, 
if you look at the 1986 master plan, there's a lot of people who like it being rural and spread out. There's a lot of people who like having agricultural land, recreational land. Um, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a lot of different categories in a survey. Like, do you want lots of stores? Do you want supermarkets? Do you want uh, this, that, or the other? And it, it, it uh, I, I feel like it offers a good. Uh, it, it, it lets the majority of, uh, or at least the majority of those who voted, which is how it works, just shine above what, whoever the loud minority is. Um, it lets you know that um, it, it, it offers clarity to what the average hope and expectation is. Um, and there's not a lot of regulation in this town, so it's kind of hard to apply it um, as it is, but um, Honestly, that's part of it. Like, you look at the 1986 master plan, like, what portion of you want zoning? Not very many. I think it's probably similar now. And, I mean, that's, uh, um, that's just an example of, of giving an idea of what the population is actually after. Um, instead of having a, you know, a group like this trying to, like, uh, bark up the wrong tree on like, what to do, uh, it would offer some guidance into how to, you know, how, how uh, to improve roads in the future. Like, what, if, do people like dirt roads? You know, do they want... Do you want a school? Sure, stuff like that. That's a, it's a great example um, of, uh, you know, I think an update on the master plan would let, uh, would offer some clarity on whether people wanted to be part of the Mascoma Regional District or whether they wanted their own school or whether they thought everyone should homeschool or whether they thought that there should be school choice. There's, there, you know, there's lots of, uh, it's just a big, nicely centralized collection of surveys that offer some information to pick from when you make decisions. And again, it's not regulated, it's not oh. enforceable. It's Part of the reason for having a master plan is that the, the RSA is required them. The, sorry, the what? The RSA is required them, the, the state requires it. However, it also states that uh, it can be extremely simple. It only requires the first two sections, one of which is a mission and uh, what do you want to do as far as keeping your town, you know, uh, uh, functioning. You can have as many as eight or ten sections, which, as Angus said, you can have a big long set of surveys and a whole bunch of details in it. It's basically what you want to make it. So you mentioned schools. Mm -hmm. um, how is that part of a planning board? function schools, that seems. Uh, we don't. Like, is this master plan planning board planning thing, or is this a town way? Like, I'm uh, right. The, the, I think the correct and ethical way to create the master plan is to perform surveys. So the planning board is simply reporting results of of a batch of surveys. Um, in other words, the planning board gets to do a lot of things as a representative democracy. Um, but I think that the information projected on the master plan needs to be of a direct democratic nature. Like it needs to be people responding. That's my understanding. I could be completely wrong about that, but that's the, the best that I've gathered. And you're right. It could be a bunch of surveys or it could be something as simple as having the uh, two sections and having a public hearing and saying, well, what do you guys want? And then just... What two, what two sections are required? The first two. Do you know what they are? Uh, yeah. One is the mission and the other one is scope or vice versa. I I guess kind of like an MOU? Yeah, it's just a matter of uh, do you want to keep it simple or do you want to get more and more detail? I mean, that's what a master plan can be as far as what the uh, state says. And you, you pointed it out, it really is. Right. So that's that's a key component to remember through the whole thing is that's what, that's the only part of it that makes it tolerable for them to be called a master plan in my opinion is that it's it's like it does say though that the regulation should be consistent with what's in the master plan. Yeah. That's all it says. Yeah. We lived in a small city at one point and the master plan kind of was what 
<laughs> the excuse for anything that was done is, well, it's in the master plan. So it's, yeah, well, it's, that was a snapshot of surveys that was big picture, like it got turned into a tool to make things happen that arguably should or shouldn't have happened. Right? So I guess there's the danger. Understandable. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of moderation. I would like to see maybe something more than two chapters, but I think that keeping it in-house and keeping it relatively simple might end up creating something that's a little bit, uh, that, that people might actually be interested in looking at. Um, I mean, I don't think most people are interested in reading this like Old Testament sized thing. Like, I fell asleep by the time I got to the third chapter. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's like, it's a real snoozer. Yeah. Um, so, so if there was some, because it's non-regulatory, it doesn't need to necessarily have the right legalese, like perhaps our subdivision regs would be advised to have. It's like, I don't know, that's a, that's a, that's a thought. Um, we're getting ahead of ourselves with the master plan, but that's a, no, that's a thing. I think it says something about uh, the need to have uh, public participation. If not in the uh, meetings of every month, then uh, uh, other kind of feedback, whatever, you know. People want to offer. That's the important part. Whether you put it down in a, in a, a thing like this, like that, thick with a bunch of surveys, or you keep getting that feedback from people, that's what's needed. Sure. Yeah, feedback is good. Uh, Paul, do you have anything you want to contribute? I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd like to say this is the best planning board meeting I've ever had. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So uh, with that, uh, rather than mine, I uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So Public comment? That was... Oh. You asked us things. You What you wanted to hear us Sure. Comment. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember. I, I buy that. What, what do you I don't say? remember anything. I was holding it in my head so I could comment right on, at the end. No, no, and no. I don't remember. Oh, I'm sorry, Maureen. <laughs> but it's okay. All right. Next time I'll bring paper and I'll take That's I mean, great. I'll go ahead and I can take notes. Okay. Uh, well, okay, so that motion's out there, and 